All right, in an attempt to get my table freed up and start working on some other guns, I'm going to go ahead and this is my piston for the Ares G36. I have, oh, my bad. I have uh, Swiss cheesed it. This is the way I like Swiss cheese. Um, I have another piston where I cut out squares, the sections removes a lot more but I kind of like this because it's a lot easier if you if you just have uh, it's a lot quicker so that's done um, and then in the back here I put some sorbo I have some uh, neoprene I think it's called right here I could use but uh, instead I'm going to use sorbo first just to see how that impacts the teeth uh, will hit backwards from back winding but I have also um, oh. I don't want my interverse latch to pop out. Uh, basically, to see here, we've got three teeth are uh, short stroked on the back end. Uh, main question with that is, is it going to still feed with the tap up plate? The spring on this is really, uh, really strong. Um, I think it's about a tooth and a half, maybe two teeth before this lifts off. Uh, so we should have no feeding issues. Um, any, any more any more than three is just overkill and you can have a huge problem with feeding if the spring right here is not good enough. Now I could cut off the three teeth here but I'm not even going to mess with it because I don't have a tool that cuts it really fast. I hate having to take so much time to cut that uh, and it's not very much weight. Um, but that's kind of why I did this. Swiss cheese was because uh, the inside has the ball bearings. so. Uh, basically I try not to do too much work especially because it just takes so long to do that and I don't have all that time if I did I could do whatever I wanted okay so that's what's going on I'm gonna pop this in there uh, these have been shaved down just a little bit uh, allows for better flow so we should have good for that um, basically I'm going to add a MOSFET for this and the JB weld over here, have JB welded the uh, the blowback bolt, and we're going to see how well that works. If that breaks off, oh well, it just means I won't have blowback. Um, it should be set in 24 hours cure, and then I will Dremel it, just sand it down, make sure it's uh, perfect, and then we will check and see the whole setup once it's back together. Okay, so uh, basically that's it. I'm gonna get this off my table, put this all back together, and put a MOSFET on this, and we're gonna be good to go. This is definitely like an M150, M160 somewhere. Um, I have fixed the air seal on this gun. Here's the, uh, the new uh, piston O-ring. Gives a perfect air seal with a new o-ring in this uh, air nozzle. Um, this is the nice, I think this is garter, both these and this, uh, and the front of this, very good. I love those kinds of parts. I have tried many other parts and garter by far, unless it's a metal piston head, which is nice too, um, last a very long time. I have not had these uh, break like other people have. So I have a white, Right here, explosion for GMP. Uh, but basically, that's it. I'm gonna close it up and be all set to go. And we're gonna get shooting and see what happens. Okay, I'm all done. Um, did a really nice job, of course, like always. Uh, so that's ready to go to the MRF. And then in here, um, I have clipped and soldered. You can see that's pretty nice uh, together. So I gave a really good connection. Uh, there's no, it's a solid ball all the way around. So uh, checked it with the, uh, what is this called? I keep forgetting, multimeter. Um, resistance was uh, 0.07, I think it was. I remember. I'm trying to remember, but I can't because I have a bad memory. Yeah, 
it's 0.7. It'll actually get to 0.7, but my uh, fingers can't hold it very straight. So uh, that gets to 0.7, this gets to 0.7. So, um, so the micro switch is now using the, uh, the it's going to be using the Murph MOSFET with trigger wire. So um, very interesting seeing my Aries have this. Uh, okay, so JV Weld still going to take. Uh, 40. I'm gonna wait uh, till tomorrow morning, so that way it gives it like 36 hours or something like that. Um, this could be so freaking awesome if I get it. If that's that should be a pretty good uh, fix instead of going for a CNC and spending more money. So right now I'm gonna use this stuff uh, simply because I couldn't get the couldn't really get the shrink wrap in here. Heat shrink, excuse me, uh, really in here. So I'm gonna use this, this stuff. And this is electrical brush-on tape, and I'm gonna apply maybe two or three coats. Um, this was recommended on airsoftforms.com, which is a really awesome place. I love airsoft forms. I've been on Evike, been on airsoft forms. I've looked through airsoft society. Uh, I've been at airsoft mechanics, and out of all the places, I really like airsoft forms a little bit more than any of them. Um, Evike got really boring for me, and then. Uh, Airsoft mechanics, uh, I really just don't care for a lot of those people there. Uh, simply, we're going to put this on here and then I uh, guess we'll go ahead and test shoot this. See what goes on. Alright, here she is. Let's see how she does. Nothing happens. because it's on the semi-lock. Yeah, it's shoot full auto because when you put it together, can you hear me? Okay, good. Um, when you put it together, the semi doesn't work sometimes because the way I had it spun, I can't remember what position I had, so I have to sometimes go full auto first. See, because it'll try to lock up. Again, excuse me, if you can't hear me, like I was saying, it will try to lock up until you pass it. And it seems like I'm going to have an issue with that because it, it, again, if you can't hear me, I need to remember to wait a second. Um, it passes the semi cutoff, so can't shoot. That, yeah. That right there is a burst fire from this thing. See where the piston is. Okay, uh, what we see, stuff stinks, that electrical tape, um, smells more now because it's, the line's starting to get a little bit warm, uh, this electrical tape stuff. Smells a little bit. Um, starting to get a little bit warm. As we watch here in the uh, window, it goes back to about here. But it does it so fast.
the low resistance wires are uh, hot. This is hot right now. This is kind of warm. The low resistance wiring is hot uh, right now. And what we can do is probably go down a tiny bit. It's probably what I would just, uh, because it shouldn't be getting hot. Battery, can't fill anything. MOSFET's a little warm. But the low resistance wiring is the hottest of it all. It looks like what might be happening is when I go into a uh, burst fire, it sounds like there might be a little bit of grinding, uh, like a go and stop feature. I mean, I've, no I've noticed it now, but um, I don't think it should be doing that. I'm pretty sure I'd open it up and the piston should be good to go. Uh, let's watch again. I don't, I don't... I don't hear anything anymore now. Um, so we've got a pretty amazing uh, trigger response. Uh, it's very quick. <laughs> you can see that. It's very uh, quick. So as soon as I pull the trigger, so um, Okay, so my main question is, we've got this all ready to go. Uh, might drop the motor down a little bit, even though the motor's not, motor's not really heating up. It's, it's the wiring, which is kind of strange to me, because usually the wiring by itself. Uh, MOSFET's getting a little warm, too. Might have something to do with the burst fire, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, the wiring. It's a little bit more hotter, which is kind of interesting. That's kind of strange. Um, the only thing that seems to be heating up is right in this area to this. Okay, so we don't have a problem firing. Uh, we can see everything's going good. Maybe what's happening is the teeth were not exactly uh, dremeled meshed so that the piston could go back the right amount of way. Um, so I noticed when I switched to a metal tooth piston and I used the rate of fire that I wouldn't hear any grinding whatsoever. And I think that's because they're so straight with plastic, it kind of has to, especially with the angle of engagement corrected uh, on this one. Um, it has to kind of mesh itself in those teeth and so it's kind of just if it's not perfect it's going to make itself perfect to what it's supposed to be uh, but I'm looking at the piston to see where it where it goes I have short stroke three teeth so it should be about right here however it looks like it might be uh, However, it looks like it might be stopping really short. It's just hard to tell because it goes so fast. So that's where the last tooth is. Okay, now goes the, uh, still, still no matter, even though this is warm, 
it's more than warm, it's a little bit hot. This isn't, so I can keep shooting this. Um, the thing to do right now is to test it the way I wanted to. So we're going to do some shooting in full auto, and then I'm going to push the anti-reversal latch button. And it could break the back of that piston. Uh, I put Sorbo on there just to run this test. All right, there's the, there's the piston right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and press the interverse latch. Nothing happens. Um, there we go. Have to push it very uh, stiff, very stiff. Um, I just noticed that with the active braking, there is no point to have an anti reversal latch button. Uh, it was a nice feature when I didn't have active braking. However, now that I have active braking, it's almost always at the front in the same spot. Let's get over here so we can see a little bit better. That'll probably be a little bit better. Okay, so looking down there. See? See, it stops in the same spot. So, antiverse latch is not even necessary. Uh, so, I'm not even going to test the theory that uh, it probably gets damaged or whatnot. We can see it's still working. Um, I could probably use a flashlight and see in there and see my Sorbo, which uh, I'll do right now. <clears throat> Looks like I still see it there, but uh. Easy way to tell is just to take out the back spring and look down. Gotta love that about this uh, gun. Um, let's disconnect the power real quick. The reason I do that is because I don't want to accidentally hit a trigger button, have it try to shoot while uh, the spring is out of the piston. That would be really bad. I smell electrical uh, tape burning. It's this stuff. This glue stuff. Paste, whatever. Uh, okay, so open up the back here. So it's uh, short stroke, three teeth. Flashlight down there, and we're going to check this right now. Sorbo is still there. It's in good condition. Um, I see everything's in good condition. So, all we need to do now is get the blowback bolt uh, sanded and grinded down for tomorrow morning, put it in here. A blowback, uh, have a nice rate of fire, and have a nice uh, feet per second plus round burst, and this thing will be over the top uh, with a high FPS spring. I'm guessing with three teeth cut down, it will probably be uh, a little bit under 400 or 400, uh, simply because it was shooting 440, 435, 440 uh, with. Um, not 100% compression. Now it has 100% compression, so it's definitely gonna be shooting a little bit hotter. I may actually turn this gun into a DSG.
just because it's that easy, that nice. To swap out the spring, it's that easy to get in the gun. The wiring's not in the way, it's nice motor caged. Uh, mags are pretty nice. Overall, the only thing that sucks about G36C uh, having a DSG setup is the battery. Uh, no room for the battery, so. All right, so that's pretty much that. Um, again, the wiring has cooled down a lot faster. This is warm. So you may actually continue shooting the whole time and you might not have an issue because uh, this is the only thing heating up, which is kind of strange to me. Uh, from my experience, the wire line doesn't heat up. It's the motor MOSFET in the battery, uh, especially in this low resistance stuff. So that's kind of strange. Um, could be for a number of issues. Could be the active braking. Could be the burst. Could be there's mechanically uh, something to do with the piston. It's not completely uh, easy as flow as, flow as possible. Um, seems like getting a hand test. Also, the Prometheus spare in there is a little bit uh, grinded down, so um, there could be other little factors. Eventually, I'll probably change that out uh, simply because I love the G36. But overall, this gun's getting a lot of love from me, so um, let's go ahead and get out of here for now. Well, sadly, uh, I guess the bolt didn't last very long. So you need to see and see it. So we're not going to have blowback. <laughs> we just had it, but it didn't last very long. All right, I got the bolt out. Um, this lipo is probably close to its... 70% so the MOSFET's going to probably turn off pretty soon so um, I'm not going to really do any rate of fire I'm sure it'd be in the 20s uh, probably 25 26 is what I'd guess okay so um, first things first is just go ahead and load the mag make sure everything's feeding correctly and uh, get a little chrono test going alright so we're going to do some semi First B and uh, semi. 365, 354, 350, 365, 356. So now we're staying in the 350 range, which I'm okay with. I was really just trying to get underneath 400. And uh, three teeth uh, short stroked. Um, so, uh, probably we'll change the bucking eventually. It's kind of getting uh, worn out. It's, old. it's been there for since I've gotten this gun. i uh, probably change the barrel a little bit too. So, I'll probably get a little bit higher on the FPS. Uh, I see some burst fire here. Maybe we can get some rate of fire uh, with burst fire, I'm guessing. So, it's just three round burst. So I'm, I'm seeing right now 20, 21, but I'm pretty sure it can do more than that. Uh, do full, full auto. And it's out. It doesn't have any problem. Uh, excuse me. I keep forgetting that it's loud. It doesn't have any problem uh, feeding. That's what it sounds like when it hits. Nothing really feels warm yet, so. 
basically close this thing up. Turn this off. And uh, here's how I close this thing up. I might go for a peck box, maybe just a small lipo. So here's what she looks like now. So this is just real easy to put on just to show. Bam, it's locked on. And as you can see, just so you can see the gun, it's in great condition. Drop some BBs out. Probably should have fired in the last chamber, but I don't see anything in there. And uh, so basically the only thing I've lost is blowback uh, during the spring upgrade, but um, upgraded the feet per second, the trigger response, and uh, I'd have to say this thing's more of a beast than it was before. Um, if I get that bolt CNC'd, it will not break. And this thing will be lovely. I can't imagine how it wouldn't be. Um, it's just a really small, compact uh, G36. So, see, you don't even have to if you want to. Just take that off and be like this. But uh, either way, either way, this gun is just nice overall. So. And I'm out, so maybe we'll get some blowback pretty soon, but this G36 got a lot of love, and it's really good tuned. Um, it's really nice, ready to go. I'll catch you guys later, hit you with this.